we want to get started here in just a bit on our message for this week. I want to thank those who have subscribed and I want to encourage others to subscribe. And if you down below the video there where it says Rev J Short Ministries, if you'll click on that, it'll open it up. Then you go up to the top and it's a, like a green ribbon up there that says home and, and such and just push that over where it says about. It's got the email address if you have prayer concerns or want to send us a letter or whatever or have a question and also it's got our email and uh, address and stuff so uh, then give us a thumbs up down there below the video a thumbs up and a thumbs down click on that thumbs up don't give us a thumbs down <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about Mother's Day and if you have your Bibles with you I want to encourage you to read your Bibles and to follow along and uh, to take notes where that you can uh, remember what uh, you want to uh, study about and look up later. And, uh, Proverbs chapter 31 is where we're going to be uh, reading from today, starting out. Uh, Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31. That's a very familiar scripture. Uh, the title of our message today, A Godly Mother for Mother's Day. A Godly Mother for Mother's Day. Proverbs 31 beginning in verse 10. The word of God says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships she bringeth forth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own work praise her in the gates. Blessed be the reading of that word. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this precious word. Lord, speak to us today through this message about godly mothers for Mother's Day. Father, help me to say what you would have me to say, preaching the truth from your word. Lord, without your help, I cannot preach this. Lord, without you, I cannot do anything except mess up. So, Lord, I have to have your help. And may everyone that hears me always know that without you, I'm nothing. So, Father, I ask this as I ask for the boldness, the courage, and the love and the compassion to preach your precious word. I ask it in my Lord and my Savior's name, the Messiah's name, Jesus, who is Christ. 
a godly mother for Mother's Day. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, the Lord was speaking through Paul to young Timothy, who was a young minister, a young pastor. And he says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and am persuaded that in thee also. So he was saying to young Timothy here, he says, I call to remembrance when I'm looking at you, Timothy, or talking to you, uh, the faith that your grandmother had, and also the faith that your mother has. And he says, and I'm sure you have that same kind of faith. So the grandmother, Lois, was a godly mother because she passed down what she knew about the Lord. And then uh, her daughter, Eunice, who was uh, Timothy's mother, uh, Paul said she, it had been passed down to him. So a godly mother is one who passes the gospel down. Now there may be some people that hear this message that may say, well, I've never passed the gospel down to my children or my grandchildren, it's never too late to start. If you are listening to this, you are a mother or an aunt, any woman who uh, has the opportunity to guide children and you have not given your life to Christ, you can do so at any time by calling upon the Lord, asking him to forgive you and saving your soul, then get to a pastor somewhere and, and tell them what you did and ask their help and you go on and be baptized for the glory of God. And uh, then you can start sharing the word of God, uh, saying prayers with a child before they go to bed at night, teaching a child a Bible verse. Uh, you know, once a week, we should teach a child a new Bible verse. Uh, there's a song that says, Who will pray for me when mama's gone? I want to read a little bit of it to you. It says, my rough and rowdy ways have kept me from his grace, but there's hope for me cause mama's faith is strong. She's the only hope I've got to keep me in touch with God, but who will pray for me when mama's gone? Who will pray for me when mama's gone? When my mother died, I lost one of the greatest, if not the greatest, well, I did lose the greatest uh, prayer warrior for me. Uh, and my siblings that we ever had and their children and our grandchildren because uh, mommy, she would tell me, she would ask me, she said, who was the first one that ever prayed for you? Well, at the first time she asked me that, I said, well, you did. She said, no, I said, Jesus did. That in John chapter 17, uh, he prayed for his disciples and he prayed for everybody else after that. Uh, then my wife is a great prayer warrior and uh, She's not been praying for me as long as mommy has because mommy just passed away three years ago and it's coming August and, uh, or four years ago, three years ago. And uh, so she prayed for me up as long as she was in her right mind. So uh, uh, if Lord lives long enough, she'll catch up with mommy praying for me. But a godly mother prays for their children and they would teach their children to pray for others. Uh, used to, when I was going to school, I went, my mother taught me that I was in the third grade and uh, in a one-room school. But I would, when I went out to a consolidated school, if I had a bad day at school, maybe me and some other little boy didn't get along just right and I'd be frustrated at him. And I'd come home and, and I'd be complaining I'd be wanting mommy to say, well, let's get daddy and we'll call the law and we'll get the army and we'll go and, and find that little boy and, and beat him up for you. But that's not what she would say. She would say, Jack, maybe that little boy was having a bad day. Or maybe he having it rough at home. You never know what he may be going through with. She said, when you go back to school in the morning, says, put your arm up around his neck and say, let's get along, let's be friends. Well, I wouldn't have that, but that's what she taught me. She taught me to forgive and to love. And she taught us self-defense too, if it was really needed. But she taught us to pray for people, consider what they may be going through with. 
not always be ready to jump on somebody or to, to try to start a fight. And you know something? She was 100% right. But she prayed for me, and who will pray for me when mother's gone? Well, if you've got a good wife, she'll pray for you. If you've got good aunts, they'll pray for you. If you've got Christian women in the church that you go to, they'll pray for you. Or if you've got a Christian neighbor, uh, some woman that's your neighbor. We're talking about mothers today. Uh, you may not even realize it, but that woman that you see get up and go to church every Sunday, she's saying prayers for you. She's praying for her neighbors. But a godly mother is the greatest prayer warrior a child has. A godly mother is one who teaches a child that they'll reap what they sow. They'll tell a child, you know, if you do this, if you follow this lifestyle, it'll come back to haunt you. Mommy used to tell me, she said, Jack, pray and pray earnestly. Think about what you're doing. Repent, rededicate your life to Christ. See, when I got up grown, or I thought I was grown, the caliber said I was an adult, but my mind didn't act that way. It takes, we don't really get adult till we become a Christian, a true Christian. But she would tell me to pray earnestly. She said, this will come back on you someday. Whatever you sow, you'll reap. And she always knew that whatever she uh, sowed, uh, we could suffer here. Now, I'm not talking about that the child will go to hell for the parent sins. Uh, we can get, we get forgiveness individually. But if you are a parent and you don't pay your debts, that can cause your children trouble down the road. If they have to have credit or they go want to buy something and they do a credit check on them, they can check back far enough and they can say, well, your parents never did pay their debt, so therefore we think you are a bad risk. <coughs> a godly mother is one who knows the Bible is true. They may not understand it all, but they will teach it to their children because they believe it all. A godly mother will teach their children, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Our daughter now, who has uh, our precious granddaughter, Rory, she's uh, singing Jesus Loves Me to Her. <coughs> when I try to sing it to her, she cries. But she's singing Jesus Loves Me to Her, and she's praying with her and quoting Bible verses to her. And then her grandma, Laura, she's getting in on that through the internet, or whatever that's called, Zoom talking, I guess. Good, good. Zoom visited, <laughs> and uh, so. But there's a song that says, "If I could only hear my mother pray again." Uh, I've heard people say, "Where the mothers have been have gone on." I can say that now. Uh, they said, "You know, I can remember mommy praying. I can remember walking in mommy's bedroom and she catching her down on her knees praying, and she'd be praying for her children to be saved." I was talking to a preacher friend of ours. Uh, several weeks ago uh, before this coronavirus started, right before it started, uh, preaching over to Joy Center, Larry Stubblefield. Uh, he was talking about my mother and he said he remembered one thing that mommy would always tell him just before they'd get ready when they were talking to be at church together, when they'd be getting ready to uh, leave, that she would say, Larry, right, pray for my children. Pray for my children. A godly mother don't only pray for her children and her grandchildren and great-grandchildren and so on. She will ask others to pray for her. She, wants, she knows that's the best medicine that a child can have is praying for her. We were taught to work ethic, to be honest, to pay our debts. But we were taught the most important thing we could do was to be faithful in Christ Jesus. She'd quote that scripture too. What would it profit a man if he would gain the whole world and lose his own soul? If I can only hear my mother pray again. It says, how sweet and happy seem those days of which I dream when memory recalls them now and then and 
with what rapture sweet my weary heart would be if I could hear my mother pray again. Who will pray for me when mom's gone? A godly mother. Abraham Lincoln said once that no boy is poor who has a godly mother. Well, what if she don't have a lot of cash to give that boy? He's still not poor or a girl either one. If they have a godly mother who would teach them about Jesus. I can remember one summer when school was out that me and mommy, we was, I can see that old kitchen now. Uh, we would set up late and she would can at a pressure cooker, be canning and in, through the summer and late summer. And uh, she read the New Testament through to me that summer. And she also read a book called Lucy Winchester. I've been trying to find that book and can't. And, uh, but uh, I remember her reading the scriptures to me. I've heard people talk about their spiritual giants. Billy Graham was their spiritual giant. And uh, that's all right. He was a faithful servant of God. Uh, other people, they'll say, or, or our old pastor we used to have, he was the one that, that uh, led me and, you know, uh, to be a Christian and whatever. Well, there's lots of people can be our spiritual giant. But my mother was my spiritual giant. Uh, and talking about Billy Graham, uh, he would have a crusade in the spring that would be televised and one in the fall. And I'd be out playing and she would come and holler and say, it's time for that to come on, Billy Graham to come on. I'd have to come here. It would last about 30 minutes sometimes. When it first started coming on, I believe it would last an hour and it got down where it would just be 30 minutes. And uh, she would have me to listen to him. She would take me to church. Uh, she would uh, see that I was in a good youth group. She did beat me over the top of the head with it. And, uh, but when it came time, uh, you know, when it came time to play games, we would play games or time to do our chores. We did chores and when it was church time, we did church. And uh, she also, one time, the preacher said, uh, he said, as soon as Jack and my cousin was sitting with me, uh, I said, as soon as Jack and called my cousin's name, well, quit talking, I'll go on with the sermon. Well, that embarrassed the, the life out of me, so to speak. And mommy, she looked over at me. She was sitting on the other side of the church, I think at that time. And uh, when we got home, I knew she didn't like that. And I didn't know what she might do. It'd have been better for me if she'd have just cut her a switch and gave me a little switching. But what she did is says, get on the phone and call the pastor and tell him that you are sorry that you talked out loud in church what time he was preaching. Boy, that was hard to do that. But he was a gracious pastor. And he said, oh, you're, you're forgiven. See, she taught me to respect others. I'd say, Mommy, they didn't, seem like they didn't act just right, so and so did. Well, you don't, you know, still respect them. We were taught to respect people who held positions of authority. Now, we know everybody that holds those positions are not godly people, what they're supposed to be, but we were still taught to respect the American flag, what it stood for, uh, the church. Respect the postmaster, respect the doctor, the mailman, our neighbors, to respect people. If somebody's animal got out, we'll take care of it. Uh, don't tell them their cow's out. Uh, try to get their cow back in there before a vehicle comes along and hit it. Stuff like that. A godly mother is one who believes the scriptures. When somebody goes to church, and they hear a Bible verse read that says, what Jack Short is doing is a sin. Now, there's been Bible verses that said that stuff, but it didn't say it like that. I'm paraphrasing. Then they go home and tell Mommy, Mommy, I don't want to go back to that church because the preacher said something that hurt my feelings. Well, a mother that's not a godly mother might would do something like this. Well, you're not going back there again. If that's the way they do, I thought church was all about love, not saying anything that would make you think about your condition, about where you might spend eternity. Church is all just love, love, love. Or I'll go down there and tell that preacher off. We'll give him a good sock in the nose. Or we'll go, we'll have that part removed from scripture. Yeah, let's just have that part removed from scripture. 
They can't preach that anymore because that hurts Jack's feelings. No, my mommy used to say, Jack, if the word of God steps on your toes, your toes are in the wrong place. It's time they move up closer to the altar. They get closer to God. How do you remember your mothers or your grandmothers? You got grandmothers on each side. I can't remember my grandmother on my daddy's side. And my grandmother on mommy's side was pretty much sick as far back as I could remember. But I've heard mommy say that she would say, children, pray while you're still able to pray. Because something could happen to you so bad and so quick, you may not have time to pray. You know, you hear people, they're trying to soothe themselves if a loved one gets, you know, uh, something happens to them. Uh, seem, it seems to ease them a little bit if you say, well, they never knew what hit them. Well, if they are ready to meet God, then that's the best way. But you know, if they're not ready to meet God, it's better that they do know what's going on or that they'll have that change, that brief moment to call out to God with a sincere heart. There's scripture that teaches uh, elderly Christian women to teach younger women scripture. So they may not be your child or grandchild. They may just be a younger woman in the church. You know, you take them under your wing as a godly mother and teach them about Jesus. Because church, out in YouTube, wherever you may be, wherever you may be listening to this at. Eternity is forever. Money will not mean a thing on Judgment Day. Gold and silver will melt away like the old song says. The only thing that's going to count, the Bible teaches us. A scripture that I have preached out of many times in Luke chapter 10 Jesus sends them out two by two and they can come back in a little while in a, in a few days or so and they tell Jesus what was happening, how people was being healed. They said, Lord, even the devils, the demons uh, listen to us when we speak to them in your name. Even the demons are afraid of us in your name, Jesus. If somebody were to come into the church house and say that today, that'd be the awful, oh, well, good. Tell us what happened. Jesus did something like this. Hey, hey, hey. That's not what to be all excited about. Can you imagine the expression on her face? Well, here he sent us out to heal people, to raise the dead, and to cast out demons uh, out of people. Then when we come back telling about it, he says, that's not the main thing. What was the main thing? Jesus said that your name is written in the Lamb's book. We celebrate Mother's Day. You know what? Some people hearing this may not like to hear it, but a mother needs to deserve to be celebrated. I celebrate my mother with great joy, and I celebrate my wife as a mother to our children, and a granny to Isaiah and Rory as a great Christian mother. And I know other ladies that we go to church with, who's Christian mothers to their children and grandchildren, and they also uh, will take care of other people's children and watch over them. So uh, the question is today, as a mother, have you told your children about the most important thing that matters? Yes, we need to work. We need to be uh, saving, conservative with our stuff, not being wasteful. But lots of rich men will go to hell. Lots of people who never wasted a penny will go to hell. Then there's lots of rich people who gave the Lord credit, depended on him, will go to heaven. But the most important thing for anybody's child is to raise them up in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now children will get where they don't want to hear that. But that don't mean you stop. You just learn new ways of getting through to them. And I tell you the best way ever 
is when they're sitting around on Christmas to open those presents, is just before you open them, like at our house. Laura started this when we, early on in our marriage. She'd get the Bible out and she'd read the first Christmas story out of Luke 2. Then we would talk about it. Now we might hold a little church service, a Bible study a few minutes, and you can see our oldest one. He's more anxious than any of <laughs> Let's hurry up and get to the Christmas present. Or just before you eat Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, is have a little witness to them. Happy Mother's Day to my daughter-in-law and my mother that's gone on and to my mother-in-law and my daughter who's a mother and to my sisters who are mothers and all the gracious ladies that out there that's been good mothers. And if you have not been a good Christian mother, start today. Give your life to Christ and start telling those children about Jesus. Let us pray. Father, thank you for Jesus Christ. And Father, today we thank you for the mother that you chose for your only begotten son, Jesus. When you told her, when your angel told her what she was going to be doing, she was a teenage girl. She was frightened. She didn't understand it all, but her reply was to you. Let it be according to your word. Lord, I pray today that not only mothers, but Father's Day is coming up, but we can pray that for them now too. That mothers, when we read the scriptures, we would say, let it be according to your will for my children to raise them up to believe in Jesus and to love their neighbors and to care for others and to forgive. Lord, we pray this as we pray for all the prayer concerns. Pray for each one of them that's on our prayer list. Lord, we pray for those that are listening to this. And Father, we pray for the president and we pray for our governor here in Kentucky and we pray for governors in uh, other states. We pray for leaders around the world. We pray, Lord, uh, for uh, medical people. Everyone that's involved, Lord, in, in trying to beat this virus, we pray for and ask your help, Lord. And Father, we pray this in Jesus' name.